But how do we make small talk? Well, there are a few questions that you can ask every day to make a simple conversation and practice a lot of pronunciation as well as different tenses. So, here are my questions for making small talk every day. The first question you should ask somebody looks like this. This question means, how are you? How are you? In English, we often say, how's it going? Listen again and repeat after me. How's it going? And this sentence means, how are you? OK, let's look at how we pronounce this. First of all, we've got some linking. So, how is is contracted into hows. We have a final consonant here, and that's going to move into the next word. So, we say it like this How's it? And you'll notice when I ask this question, you don't hear this sound. You don't hear me say, how's it going? That's not very comfortable. Listen carefully and try to hear what sound I say here. Are you ready? Here we go. How's it going? Did you notice there was no t here? What happened was the g sound ate the t sound and changed it into a k sound. So what I said was, how's it going? Listen again and repeat after me. How's it going? Now you try. Okay, that's the linking. Now let's look at the rhythm. This sentence has one, two, three, four syllables in it. Which ones are stressed? Number one and number three. The second and fourth syllables are not stressed. So this question sounds like, how's it going? Listen again and repeat after me. How's it going? Now you try. Now the last thing to consider is the tune, the melody. Does the question go up or down? Listen again and choose up or down. How's it going? What do you think? Did the question go up at the end? or down at the end? It went down. How's it going? This is a glide down, this question. So those are all the parts of the question. We've got linking, rhythm and the tune. So now we know how to say this question. Let's practice one more time. Listen and repeat after me. How's it going? Now you try. OK, let's move on to the next question. Question number two looks like this. Listen, did you have a nice evening? Listen again and repeat after me. 
Did you have a nice evening? Now you try. Okay, now in this question we have some linking here, here and here. Listen to this part and try to understand what sound I make to link these words together. Are you ready? Did you... So there's a couple of things to notice here. The first thing is that the sounds D and Y together make the sound J. J appears a lot in spoken English. You hear it when you connect words like this together, like did you, didn't you, could you, would you. And notice, I didn't say you. This sound was very, very weak. So it just sounded like uh. Not oo, but uh. So together these two words sound like did you? Listen again and repeat after me. Did you? Now you try. Okay. Next we have one word that ends in a consonant sound, v, followed by a word that's just a vowel, uh. So here it's important that we push that final consonant into the next vowel. So it makes one word that sounds like have. Listen again and repeat after me. Have. Now you try. And we have the same thing here, where again one word ends in a consonant sound, s, and the next word starts with a vowel, e. So it's important that we push that consonant into the next word, and it should sound like this. Listen and repeat after me. Nice evening. Nice evening. Now you try. Okay. That's all the linking in this question. Now let's look at the rhythm. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven syllables in this question. The first syllable is probably not stressed because it's just an auxiliary verb. And it's the same with the next syllable, the weak uh sound. That's just a pronoun. The next word is the main verb in the sentence, so that's probably stressed. But again, we have a weak uh sound after that, just an article, so that's not stressed. The next word nice could be stressed because it's an adjective, but it's not very important in this question. So it's not stressed. The final word is a two-syllable noun. In English, most two-syllable nouns follow this pattern. A stressed syllable and an unstressed syllable. So the rhythm of this question sounds like this. Did you have a nice evening? Did you have a nice evening? Listen again and repeat after me. Did you have a nice evening? Now you try. I'm sure you've noticed there's a tune in this question. Does the question go up at the end or down? Listen one more time and decide. Did you have a nice evening? Did you notice the question went up at the end? It started low. Did you have a nice evening? And then rose at the end. And that's because this question can only have the answer yes or no. In English, yes, no questions go up at the end usually. Other questions, questions with words like how, what, where, 
when, why, who, these questions, they usually go down at the end. That's an important rule to remember. Listen one more time to this question and repeat after me. Ready? Did you have a nice evening? Now you try. Oops. OK, now with this question, we don't always need to say evening. We can substitute evening for anything else we want. For example, we could say weekend or we could say trip, day, holiday, lesson. That can be substituted for anything that you want to ask about. OK, but on its own, this question will not make an interesting conversation. Listen to this conversation. Did you have a nice evening? Yes. That's not an interesting conversation. So we need another question to find out more. Have a look at this. This question sounds like, what did you do? Listen again and repeat after me. What did you do? Now you try. OK, so first of all, let's look at the linking. Here we have the sound t, followed by its voiced partner d. They're very similar, so we can just link them together. And it should sound like this. What did? What did? Listen again and repeat after me. What did? Now you try. Here we have the d and the y sound that we saw in the last question. So we're going to do the same thing. D and y make j. And then we'll have our weak uh sound. So now the question sounds like, what did you? Here, at the end, there's no linking because we just have a vowel and a consonant. It's not necessary to make any changes. OK, now let's look at the rhythm in this sentence. In questions, words like what, who, where, when, why and how are always very important. So that's going to be stressed. And remember, auxiliary verbs are usually unstressed and so are pronouns. And main verbs are usually stressed. So the rhythm of this question is, what did you do? Listen again and repeat after me. What did you do? Now you try. What about the tune? Is it a yes, no question? Like number two? Is the answer just yes or no? No, it isn't. This question is more like number one an open question, an information question, and that means the tune goes down. Listen again and repeat after me. What did you do? Now you try. If you want to make the vocabulary more interesting, you can substitute do for a phrasal verb. You could say, what did you get up to? Now this phrasal verb shows us something quite interesting. The verb get can make many 
perhaps all phrasal verb possibilities. And that means that get is usually not stressed because it's the particle, in this case the adverb up, that gives it the meaning. So here, get is unstressed and up is stressed. So this question would sound like, what did you get up to? Listen again and repeat after me. What did you get up to? Now you try. That's a slightly more interesting way to ask the question, what did you do? OK, now let's have another look at these three questions. I'd like to talk a little bit about the tenses. The first question asks about the present. The second question and the third question are both asking about the past. Question number four, that question is going to ask about the future. But in English, we don't have a tense for the future, so we use lots of different forms like present tenses, present continuous, present simple. Or we use modal verbs like will and might. Look at what I use for my question number four. Listen and repeat after me. What are you doing later? Now you try. So you'll notice, I'm sure, that the verb form in question number four is the same as the verb form in question number one. We have the auxiliary verb be and the present participle ing. Notice? the auxiliary verb be and the present participle ing. This tense is called present continuous and we use present continuous to talk about the immediate present, what's happening now, but we also use it to talk about the future. It's important to show when you're talking about. In this question the adverb later tells us that this question focuses on the future, not the present. OK, once again, let's look at some of the linking features in this, in this question. So, first of all, we have a final consonant and an initial vowel, so we have to push that consonant into the next word. And this is unstressed because it's an auxiliary verb, so it's just going to be a weak uh sound. So together these two words sound like this. Water. Listen again and repeat after me. Water. Now you try. Now we have a pronoun, again unstressed, so it's going to be quite weak, just a y sound, and that gives us what are you? Listen again and repeat after me. What are you? Now you try. Here and here, there are no changes that we have to make. Doing later links together very naturally without any changes. Now let's look at the rhythm of this sentence. So remember, question words are always important, so they're stressed. Auxiliary verbs and pronouns, usually unstressed. And here we have a verb with two syllables. The first syllable is stressed and the ing is always unstressed in verb forms. And then at the end we have the word later. And later starts with a stressed syllable and then the ending er, that's always unstressed at the end of words. So we can see the rhythm is 
What are you doing later? Notice I have to be quite fast with these two unstressed syllables and quite slow with these two unstressed syllables. And that's because the time between the stressed syllables should be about the same. Listen again, try to notice and then repeat after me. Ready? What are you doing later? Now you try. OK, now what about the tune in this question? Is it like number one, number three, or is it like number two? Well, it's very simple to tell. We just need to know if it's a yes-no question, the answer can only be yes or no, or if it's an open information question. And here we can see that it starts with a question word, like number three and number one, there are many possible answers to this question. So it's an open or information question. And that means that the tune goes down like this. Listen again and repeat after me. What are you doing later? Now you try. Now once again we can make this question a bit more interesting lexically. If we look at the verb, just like in question number three, where we use the pattern up to, in question number four, we could change it to, what are you up to later? The stress pattern will be exactly the same, so we don't need to change that. Once again, up is stressed. Listen one more time and repeat after me. What are you up to later? Now you try. OK. And those are my four questions that you can use to practice a lot of pronunciation, like linking, like rhythm and tunes. You can practice different tenses, present tenses, past tenses, future forms. And you can practice just making conversation, general speaking practice. See if you can find somebody that you can have this conversation with every day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.